Hello, good morning and welcome to Joy News Interactive here on Joy News Channel on DSTV Channel 41 and Go TV Channel 144 on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram or Joy News on TV. I'm a PCC really thank you so much for your company. Now, infertility is a global reproductive health issue affecting many couples, except it is mostly seen as a woman's problem. Its prevalence has torn apart many couples and shattered many marriages. President Akufado on Tuesday took up the issue of stigmatization around surrounding childlessness at the sixth edition of the America Africa Asia Luminary 2019 in Accra. is being treated as an outcast and having her marriage ending. These cases, I believe, are not peculiar to these countries only, but are also representative of the unfortunate situation prevailing on the continent. It must end. The factors that lead to in infertility, whether anatomical, endocrinological, genetic or immunological, are not ones women wish on themselves. Yes, there may be other factors, such as infections to the reproductive system and poor health practices, which are preventable and may result in infertility. However, the onus is on each and every one of us to work towards finding solutions to addressing infertility and ending stigmatization. We must, as a matter of necessity, take urgent steps to incorporate issues regarding infertility prevention and its treatment in the development of maternal and reproductive health care policies of our respective countries. We need to train more gynecologists and embryologists. And we must most certainly make assisted reproductive technology, commonly referred to as in vitro fertilization, IVF, affordable and more available to the majority of, of women on the continent who are faced with infertility. President Akufado and now First Lady Rebecca Akufado says Ghana needs, the, needs to provide the necessary training to establish a strong platform of experts in fertility care. this conference we will also deliberate on infertility. As we do so, let us be minded of this fact. Blaming, mocking, and shunning of perceived infertile couples must stop. It is everyone's responsibility to empower infertile couples, fight against stigmatization, change mindsets, influence national policies on fertility and build fertility care capacity in Africa and developing countries. So how do we deal with this issue? Reverend uh, Asante Ajay, um, he suffered childlessness over a decade into his marriage before becoming a father. Uh, he currently has two publications on infertility and childlessness in which he shares his personal experiences. Indeed, the sharing of his experiences has since metamorphosed into a full-blown ministry for him. He spoke to Israel Lyre on Joy News Prime. It is actually a very painful, lonely road. You know, people, human as we are, we, we, get, we marry and we expect that we become fathers and parents. Yeah. And so that's an expectation. Then suddenly, you know, for me and my wife, we decided that for the first two years, we we're not going to get a child. So that was a decision you made? Yes, for the first two years, not to have a baby. So in the third year was when we, we actually began looking for the baby. It never came until the sixth year. And it was painful. Because how painful what was happening. The point is, you, 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 because we could stop pregnancy, we had thought it would be easy to get pregnant. Okay. So once you, you don't want it, so you stop it. Now you want it, you should get it. That's a psyche, but it doesn't work that way. And the expectations, the questions, people ask you, what are you waiting for? Uh, when are you giving birth? When is uh, the children? When are the children coming? Uh, uh, what is happening to you? Aren't you a man enough? You know, don't you have faith? I mean, these are, these are questions that are asked by people who are so close. People who should otherwise be supporting you. Because, see, people don't know that infertility is... The Bible says in Proverbs that faith, hope deferred is... Uh, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. 
So when your hopes for being a father or mother is deferred, you, 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 you fall sick. And you're a sick person, you need people to support you. Were you one of those who blamed your wife for that? No, 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 no. We actually, when we had a challenge in the early years, she was going to the hospital. Those days in the 80s, remember? She was, was going to the hospital. Yes, she went to see Dr. Fusu Bakun. At the time, he was the, the leading Ghanaian in Kumasi at Tech Hospital. So she was going, I think she went for the first uh, year or so. Then the doctor asked me to join her. Did, so you, did you willingly join? I, I willingly went. I willingly went. And he... Did you, did you think that you were a problem? Well, I, I, wasn't, I, I didn't think so. But I was ready for a baby. And therefore, if my going was what would help me get a baby, why not? So I went and had to go through some lab tests and then some sperm tests. And then eventually he prescribed some medications for me and said, you should take one three times daily for three months without break. And so did that suggest that you were the problem? I didn't ask, but I guess I was a factor. I guess I was a factor too. Big. Otherwise, he wouldn't give me the, those medications. I don't know why he gave me, and I didn't ask. But I just went and got the medications, and I began taking them. And I think it was in the sixth week of the, my medic taking medications that my wife got pregnant. Unfortunately, she had a miscarriage, I think, in the third or fourth month. And so we went back. But this time, he didn't give me any prescription. But she got pregnant again, and then God was gracious to us. We got our first baby looking up. All right. We're going to be speaking with uh, Seth Kwame Bwanting, as I indicated earlier. He's joining us. Uh, in, it's interesting that the president has brought up this issue now, or uh, the president and the first lady, both of them are talking about this issue now, because this is something you're working on. You have a documentary coming out on that. So you tell us, what is the situation looking like as far as statistics is concerned here in Ghana, or the trend is in Ghana? Well, it's very high, uh, especially among men and women. Uh, in the past, we thought it was solely uh, a, a woman's problem. problem. Now, it's 50-50. When you speak to doctors, they will tell you 30% of the problem is from women, 30% from men, and 30 from other sources, other natural sources. All right. For example, the natural ones, I got uh, recently that some women are born without wombs, and some don't even have vagina. They don't. These are congenital anomalies, and these are happening. So these uh, the 30% that uh, that is not coming from either the man or the All woman. Right. But let's tell an example, uh, a story. One of who I interviewed, for example, they've been married for 20 years, 20 years, and they are still looking for a child. The man went somewhere and got free. So the man thought he was not the problem. All right. But when the wife managed to convince him, then let's go to hospital one day. And he followed. They went, they did the test and realized the man rather had a problem. So the three that the other woman claims the man asked to him, where the three coming from? <laughs> it's, it's a serious issue, Israel. It says it's um, a serious issue, even though I'm having to uh, smile about it. But you, you've also done some research, research which indicates that increasingly we're having men who are becoming more infertile and uh, women as well. What have you been able to establish? Yes, it's true. When it comes to men, and it's, it's gradually increasing in Ghana, and it has to do with, with uh, high consumption, especially men, high consumption of alcohol, aphrodisiac, and, um, and um, uh, what is it? Aphrodisiac. Um, smoking. Those, okay. Those, those are toxic to the sperm. So you might be thinking, yeah, you drink, but you're able to perform well in bed. No, sorry, you are firing, but there's nothing in it. Yeah. All right, uh, so that's the conversation happening on infertility. You can send your comments through WhatsApp number uh, 05 40 10 909. 05 10 Now, let's talk about men's gold. A lot of customers have been anxious waiting for their money, but this customer uh, thinks that number one has turned the customers into goods. Let's listen. Easily 
as ya ba bo bo sia wo ho nso yesika na wo ho na mo one yes raw ya draw woni ye ye adwuma wa asumduem nso ne wo ma o man ga na nyina hu se yesika wo se se sky kura de ma me me gina no man roba kura be timi akosa me wa kwob ma gi me pepe nso ka so odi me kwose ba bi kode na why she pepe si e de ano no e tu be timi aye o ma me se won timi nya ne sadia en fa se ni ye Baby, I will be a radin crow and Yalena was scanning here. Me, Sans or Yalia, Wahame, a radin one who did not ask a check. Never scan a mummy, Yamish. All right, we posted that video on our Facebook page, and you had this to say. Yantichi Samuel says, I now understand what my accounting teacher told us way back in senior high school. And I quote, If you want to live long, make sure you take big loans from people. They will always pray for you to live. Oh. say two two says it's sad that these customers think there's money somewhere for them. The, the scammer. Uh, is playing with people's emotions and intelligence. It's so painful to watch. But I have to reserve my further comments. Joseph Bar says, I really love this woman. What a motherly advice. This one says, I love the side. She said, don't be sick because she needs the money. Let me take the last comments from uh, Jinti Collins who says that's all. All she needs is her money.